PK-52, the Saturday morning meeting. Jake Paul, Mike Tyson. One of the most brilliantly promoted events that I've witnessed in my life. What did you expect? What were you thinking? I had friends from around the nation that I knew were at AT AT&T Stadium last night that spent all the money in the world to be there at that event. Did you think it was going to be one of the most epic fights in the history of the world? You, you couldn't have thought that. No, nobody, nobody could have thought that. Did you think that maybe Mike Tyson would have got one punch in and won the fight and then the, you know, the 58-year-olds of the world would unite? I, I don't know what everybody thought, but how powerful was this event? It doesn't matter whether you watched it or not, whether you cared or not, it's going to be talked about both in a negative light and the positive light. Heroes. In your life, how many heroes have you had? A lot of times, a child will have a hero as a parent or as a teacher or as a coach. I guess, you know, obviously my grandfather was a gigantic influence in my life and he was obviously a hero. So that was my family member. But I grew up in West Texas, and the only thing in the world that mattered in West Texas as a child was West Texas football. I got a chance to play for Midland Lee, and the only thing I wanted, I didn't want to be a part of that team. I wanted to start Friday night games as a starter for Midland Lee. Coach Jim Acri was my coach, and I got to tell you, probably would have done anything on earth for that man to get the opportunity to be a part of the legacy of that team. There were so many things. There were practices at 100-plus degree days, um, two-a-days. It was, it was tough. And you were expected to be tougher than the tough. There was awards, and one of the awards was to become a starter, to move into the varsity locker room, which was <laughs> – it was, it was hallowed. It was hallowed. Nobody came in there except for people that were on the varsity football team and the coaches. That was it. Nobody else on earth was allowed in there. They started doing awards. I mean, for example, a lot of people know that Ohio State does Buckeyes on their helmets. So we had an award system. We had stars, five stars, earned you a rebel flag. And once you earn four rebel flags, you earn a skull and crossbones. When that was laid out to me, there was nothing else on earth more important than to achieve those skull and crossbones. So it doesn't matter who you are in life. There's been heroes, role models, and achievements that you put yourself up to. And it doesn't matter whether you're a football player, a baseball player, whether you're a gamer. And in in the gaming community is very interesting to me because, you know, you bought a game and and you became a coder. You you unlocked the secrets of this game. You completely destroyed the game. You moved to another game. You did it again. Now, when something comes online and there's a brand new game out there, people will camp out to buy the first version of that game. That is a whole separate immersed community. So become the best gamer in the world. Become the best programmer in the world. You know, joining a charity and and rising up through the ranks of the charity so that now you're leading a group of people. You know, you you can look at things like um, if a disaster comes, you have the Red Cross. I mean, it's a multi-million dollar job uh, if you're the CEO of the Red Cross. So there's always something to strive for. And I think that sometimes we, we stop. And, and when you're not growing, nothing in your life is happening. When there's a goal or an achievement, you're on fire. And there's setbacks. And the setbacks are giant. The bigger the goal, the bigger the setback. Believe it. If you've never really put yourself all the way out there and found out that somebody just pulled the rug out from under your feet and you're laying there and there's nobody. There, when you fall, there's just nobody. There's nobody. But achieving that level, earning that prize, climbing that mountain, you know, getting on a hang glider and hang gliding for the first time, jumping out of an airplane, it doesn't matter what it is. I think that last night showed us 
that that people around the world want something epic in their life. And epic is different from everybody. Last night we saw a 58-year-old man and a man under 30 years old dance around for, for eight rounds, and there was no devastation. I think that the majority of people watching last night wanted one more Mike Tyson punch, just that one that came out of nowhere punch. I'll give you my background and why I was interested in this fight. Um, I knew everything that I could know about Mike Tyson when I was a young man. He came out of the Catskills. Cus Amato was his coach. Um, this coach, Cus Amato, looked at this young man and said, you will be the heavyweight champion of the world. And I'll promise you one thing, Mike Tyson believed that. And the fury that built in this man, he devastated the heavyweight ranks. Devastated, like nobody else has ever done it before or may ever do it again. It was it was incredible to watch. So he, he got into some situations. Most people know about his documented. And he was out of the fight game for a while. When he came back in the fight game, his first fight was Peter McNeely. Had a really good friend. I bought two tickets. Our plan was to fly from Charlotte, North Carolina to Las Vegas to attend that fight. At the last minute, he canceled on me. It's fine. I still went. Went by myself. I flew first class. I paid all the money to go to this event, just like people paid to go to that event last night. I sat on the airplane, and Larry Johnson from the Charlotte Hornets sat next to me. And, you know, I got his autograph on my ticket, and it was just, I mean, it started out that way. I got to the arena really early for the very, very first preliminary fights because I'd paid all the money for this ticket. I was going to see every fight. It started uh, filling up. And the celebrity started walking in. It's so funny last night when they the camera went on Shaquille O'Neal. Well, when Shaquille O'Neal wasn't Shaquille O'Neal, I mean, he was still Shaquille, but he, he wasn't at the epic level he was right now. He walked right by my chair and went down to set, oh, I don't know, about eight rows in front of me. I was in row 12. And then, uh, you know, other celebrities walked in. You know, I'm waving at them like I'm somebody. And, and I got there and... And uh, I had an empty seat next to me. I didn't even sell my ticket next to me. The room changed when they announced Mike Tyson. And he came down, no socks on, a split towel over his head. And let me tell you something right now. The, you could feel the fury on this man. He, he was going to make this a very short night. He got in the ring. And when they hit the bell and that first punch was thrown, the compression in the room, I, I don't know how to describe this because you weren't with me, but the, the air was compacted in the room as everybody ignited out of their chairs. You could feel it in your body. It was like being like in a giant drum and somebody was beating on it. And the, and the fight was around 82 seconds. It was, it, was, it was crazy. And at the end, there were so many people talking about how they felt like they got ripped off and it was a, a horrible fight. To me... It was the most epic seconds that I've ever, forget the fight, for, forget the two people fighting. It was the emotion in that room for those short two minutes. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I thought last night, they kind of got to the same level. I mean, people expected, I don't, I don't know what, what they expected, but they expected that, that one gigantic moment in this fight it didn't happen. It didn't happen. People got paid. Um, you know, people are probably upset they spent that much money. Hopefully they had a really good time and hopefully the event was, was gigantic. I will never, ever be upset about the money I spent to go to that one fight because I, I felt something I'd never felt before. There are ways to be able, right now, no matter where you are, whether you're starting your life in your business career, Maybe you're in high school. Maybe you're, you're even retired. There are things that you can do to ignite yourself. I mean to absolutely get yourself on fire again. But it's a mindset. It's no secret. Nobody has the secret power. You don't have to go to some guru and sit on a mountain and hum for, for months to find your inner self. You just have to sit there and go, this is where I'm going. This is what I'm going to do. And you know what? There is a giant risk you're going to fail. And if you fail, a lot of times you are on an island. You are by yourself. You're Tom Hanks and you're 
castaway, and you don't even have a volleyball. But you know what? It doesn't matter because you put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Immerse yourself. Find an organization. Find a charity. I mean, there's going to be tornadoes and hurricanes and natural disasters in this country for as long as you're alive. If, if you really want to put yourself out there, fly into a devastated area and donate a week of your time. And, and just be there for somebody. I, I, I belong to a wounded warrior organization, and, I, and I, I can't describe to you when I hear the story of a young man that joined the military and came back home with devastating injuries. And to hear how they've accepted this and moved forward. And some of them are still struggling. But then to me, you know, listening and helping and doing whatever I can to help them get past the struggles to unite with other people is gigantic and it makes a difference to me. I'm not going to tell you who it was, but I'll, I'll give you a quick story. I was with a guy who had an injury to his right hand and had, had lost both legs. And we were riding in my car. We'd gone to a little separate event together, and, and we were riding in the car. And I looked over, and I said, you know, if I had one wish, you know, I'd wish that you, you had your legs back. And he scolded me. He scolded me. He said, Casey, he said, I freely gave my legs for my country. And this will not deter me from who I'm going to be. And I'll be honest with you. I, I stay up with him. I follow him, I know what he's done, and everything that man said he was going to do, he's done tenfold. And, you know, if you want to ask who one of my heroes is, that's one of my heroes. When you can look at another person and tell somebody, this is what I'm going to achieve, and nothing stands in your way. Make that your goal, whether it's your children, whether it's your family, whether it's your community, whether just it's a personal goal that you want to achieve. Find that space. Find this. I don't know even what this is, but it's a thing, right? PK52, the Saturday morning meeting.